While hot dogs and burgers sizzle on those barbecues, crypto traders may have something else on their minds. The major coins getting slammed heading into the holiday weekend. And given how Bitcoin is traded when the stock markets are closed, how should holders brace for more pain? Let's get some answers from Chartmaster Carter Worth of Cornerstone Macro. Carter, what are you seeing? Well, my goodness, there's a lot going on, and obviously the stakes are high because as opposed to a year ago or three or five, the money involved is much bigger. The risk here is that we are forming an important head and shoulders reversal formation. You can be called anything you want. Uh, we're going to look at the charts together and try to figure it out. So the first of a handful. What we know is what? We're talking about an important drop. We hit the highs uh, on the mid-April point, April 14th, right? It was 64,870 or thereabouts. And we plunged 53% right to a trend line and hit the 30,000 level and bounced. But the bounce, as is often the case once you draw down that much, only made it back to where interested sellers were lying in wait, meaning after having lost money and then being able to recoup it, often people sell into that move. And you can see that uh, on that first chart. Now, the second chart is the exact same chart, but I've uh, drawn the lines a bit differently, which is to say uh, this is prospectively the shoulder of an important head and shoulders top. And so the mirror image left shoulder is that drawdown in the January period of this year where we dropped 35 percent before going on to the big new highs. But here we are and it's very symmetrical and starting to shape up that way. If and as indeed this is the formation and the uh, way forward is lower, how much lower might we be going? Well, next chart. One reference point to consider is of course the high that we saw, the all-time high, in December of 2017. And you can see that line I've drawn along there. Uh, often after breaking out from an important level, you'll revisit that level. It's a phenomenon that happens uh, a lot in individual charts, in currencies, commodities, and there's no reason it can't happen in Bitcoin. And so that level is 20,000, uh, plus or minus. So the question is, could we possibly, having dropped already 53%, could we go down that far, which would we'd be looking at a 70 plus percent decline for peak to trough? Well, uh, take a look at the last two charts. We know that Bitcoin has had uh, three similar drawdowns uh, that have actually been even more severe. In 2011, we had a 93% decline. Now, it was new then, and of course, uh, maybe a different animal now, but yet, in 2014-15, we had an 86% decline. And then in 2018-19, we had an 84% decline. 93%, 86%, 84%, meaning it's not out of the question. So final chart, putting those all together, uh, you see those three uh, similar drawdowns, if and as this one continues, sort of 80 to 90%. And were we simply to pivot back to the highs from which we broke out, that would be the December 2017 highs, uh, we would drop as far as 20,000. Wow, 20,000. Carter, wow. thank you. Carter Braxton Worth. So based on what Carter told us before at, in previous appearance, 50% um, or so is garden variety drop. 80 plus percent is not uncommon. Courtney, what, if anything, does this tell you about um, risk appetite in the markets? Is this a gauge at all for you? Yeah, I think my, the, the tough thing with Bitcoin right now is most of the movement is still just on trading and speculation right now. And there's actually less merchants who accept Bitcoin last year than did in 2017. And you're seeing things like Elon Musk came out and said that they're no longer going to accept Bitcoin, which my big problem with that is you're going to see that it's probably a lot less corporate um, uh, corporate guidance is actually going to accept Bitcoin in the future if it's going to increase their um, their carbon footprint, which really nobody's trying to do right now. So interestingly enough, you actually have seen a lot of people sell out of Bitcoin at a loss mm -hmm. recently, which isn't a good sign considering they're willing to sell out of it, assuming it's going to go lower. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing that I'm looking at right now. I do still think it's a little bit too speculative and, and volatile, um, but definitely interesting to watch here. What is interesting, though, about reclaiming that 20,000 level, which is a long ways from where we are right now, Tim, is that today, in today's market, right, think of who has entered the market since that last 20,000 level institutions, up and down Wall Street, yep. hedge funds, more retail trade. It is amazing that even with that buy-in from all facets of Wall Street, you can still go back to that 20K.
Well, it, it, and, and we've seen this in other asset classes, but in aggregate, more money's been lost in, in the last two months than was made all the way up. I mean, it, it, if, you, if you actually measure it uh, in terms of the capital. So um, the dynamics around risk and, and Bitcoin, is it, is it an analog for the market? I don't think so. Um, I, I do think that the, the dynamics with Bitcoin are, are truly unique. We've had drivers, we've had catalysts, we had Coinbase. Um, we've had uh, you know, a handful of things that have been part of this arena. It doesn't mean that risk uh, taking, as, as we've seen overall more broadly in markets, has helped Bitcoin at times in terms of liquidity. But look, the VIX plunged down near low 16 handle today, down almost 50 percent from the intraday lows of last Wednesday. Um, I, you know, I see a market that's gotten kind of complacent again. And I, I look at, you know, semiconductors have reasserted their leadership. They're up, they've outperformed the S&P by almost 12 percent in seven sessions. Um, I mean, that's uh, that's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. and, and it tells you that I think it's there's a lot of appetite for risk right now. Interesting, though, with with the uh, volatility in Bitcoin mostly going down, um, Grasso, that a lot of the meme stocks have have found a renaissance, if you will, when you take a look at an AMC, a Beyond and a GameStop. Is there any relationship in your view? So when, when you, it makes me think about when you said, is there a correlation to risk on or risk off with Bitcoin? And things that are sometimes correlated, you, you can't say that they're correlated at all. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I think that this is more about the environment, more about Elon Musk, the, the most recent action in Bitcoin. I think you could make the correlation to the, uh, to the meme stocks uh, just as a matter of people are putting their risk capital in, in a handful of names versus in just one name uh, with Bitcoin. But what's interesting to me <laughs> is if you look at the gold miners, the GDX, the ETF, that's up 14% since the middle of April. If you look at what's happened since the middle of April to Bitcoin, yeah. those are two, inversely correlated. So I think that if Carter is right uh, and we see 20,000 in Bitcoin, then we're going to see the continued movement in GDX oh, because there's a lot of that same movement there. But, but with one last thing, with the risk tolerance, you can't say that risk is off the table when you have the S&P, uh, which is less than a half a percent away from all-time highs. So I think Tim's right. The market's become complacent. People are just letting money ride. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.